Number five. Again, the same emphasis. And as you give and not take, freely you have received, freely give. Don't take, give. She remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Number three. Bureaucratization plays into Satan's hand. Sounds a big word, it's not. Just bureaucracy, it's just organizing. The church was growing, even at the time of the apostles, reaching to the outer limits of the Roman Empire in the first century. While the apostles and other eyewitnesses of the lost resurrection lived, there was order. They would go from place to place, preaching the gospel of Christ and teaching those who believed. After a period of establishing a church in a town or city or wherever, they appointed elders to oversee the churches that established. And among themselves, they were not afraid of challenging each other. We saw when Brother Paul challenged Brother Peter on the matter of whether eating with Gentiles and Jews, you know. They called out false brethren and they refuted heretical doctrines and warned us also to avoid. In all their warnings, they were not acting on their own. No. They depended on the Holy Spirit's guidance where to go. Just the time Paul wanted to go to Asia and he was stopped by the Holy Spirit. When to go? Remember when he said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. What to teach? Yes. And who to appoint as elders? They were not acting on their own. They were not bringing their brothers and sisters or their friends to man positions. No. No. But Barnabas had to leave in Antioch to go after Saul, who is from Tarsus or Paul, to bring him into the church. They were led by the Holy Spirit. Because one thing they knew, the church was not their own. The church belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. They sent out spirit-inspired epistles to guide churches in the different areas of the world. And they did visit too. Not to go there to collect tithes and offerings. But to preach the gospel that saves. But with the death of the apostles and other eyewitnesses of the lost resurrection, some of the elders began to jostle for positions as the church grew and began to organize. Those struggles for position opened the hedge for Satan to strike. Satan had been defeated by the early church. Always remember that. That's why in Thessalonica they said, these people who have turned the world upside down have come here. His instigated persecutions using the Jewish religious establishment had failed. Those persecutions couldn't stem the tide carrying the good news to different parts of the world. Rather, those persecutions fueled growth. Praise the Lord. As the church continued to expand and organize, it created hierarchies. You know hierarchies, you know? You are here, this one is here, this one is there. Did they consult the Holy Spirit as organized? <laughs> Judging by the results and knowing the biblical commands, the answer is no. Capital, no. Nobody asked them to. Hierarchies are for the world. They are not for the church of Christ. In fact, it is the direct opposite of the gospel which preaches the equality of believers. We are all the same. Christ is the head. Of course, this biblical action is what led to struggles for supremacy. That struggle for supremacy continues today in your denominations and buildings called churches everywhere. <laughs> it's the template. Satan saw his opportunity during this struggle now for positions. So he adopted a two-pronged strategy. Number one, what I call guerrilla warfare. He sent in unbelievers who pretended to have believed. 
They were like Trojan horses, sent to infiltrate the churches. Number two, he started sabotaging churches from within, using power and wealth to tempt church elders. See, from outside and from within, just as Brother Paul warned, Satan and his cohorts wouldn't have succeeded. Had followers of Christ sought the Holy Spirit's counsel as organized and heeded the warnings of the Lord and the apostles. Matthew chapter 20, verses 24 to 28 sums up the Lord's warning. Shall we read, please? And when the ten heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Praise the Lord. You can read up what led to that. So I want to summarize the warning that the Lord gave to them and to us. There should be no lords among his followers. That means no servant, no master. All are equal. A leader must serve and not be served. A leader must be the servant of the group. So if everybody is here, the leader even should be the one who should be lower than them. It's an inversion of the world where the leader stays up and everybody is serving him or her. A leader must be willing to sacrifice his or her all for the lost followers, including his life or her life. Leaders must give and not take from their followers. That's the summary of that, the Lord's command. Let's hear what Brother James, warning he gave to the apostles. That's warning of that, sorry, James warning. James was apostle, but that is the James who is the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's see the warning he gave. James chapter three, verse 17. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. Praise the Lord. Wherever there's jealousy and selfish ambition, the way they created hierarchies, what do you think happened? Ambition to be the leader, because they are now hierarchies. That's why there was disorder. And evil of every kind as James warned. They didn't follow the wisdom that's from above, which is pure, which is peace loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others. Step aside and say, okay, brother, sister, handle. It's full of mercy and good deeds, and it shows no favoritism, and is always sincere. Praise the Lord. Let's see our brother Peter's warning in the next scripture. 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 1 to 10. The elders who are among you I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion but willingly, not for dishonest gain but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Praise the Lord. Let me just summarize this. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, as elders, not by compulsion, but willingly. 
Not for gain. Not for gain. See how many times they're telling and warning all of us. Not as being lords over those entrusted to you. But what did the church do? They started building hierarchies. Be example to the flock. Be submissive to one another. Be clothed with humility. Because God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Don't seek to be exalted by human beings. Rather seek God's approval and exaltation when the time comes. He said, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The devil is always moving, looking for opportunities to strike. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Perfection is through sufferings. But once you are not vigilant, why do you think you have so many denominations all over the place? Buildings, call churches, spring all over the place. General Vasia this, pastor that. Call them brother and they will run you out of town. But the church after the apostles did not listen. And they didn't consult the Holy Spirit as they created hierarchies. That made some to be superior to others. They jostling for higher positions and more authority created divisions. Envy and bickering were what? The result, just as Brother James warned. Church leaders have stopped looking to the author and finisher of our faith. The one who was hung on the cross for our sakes. The one who died for our sins. The one who rose for justification. They have forgotten. They have turned their backs to Jesus, the Christ, the Lamb of God, the justifier of those who believe in him and wait for that which perishes, which is the world, and which is passing away. Remember, I'm talking about the church after the apostles. That means from second century churches going on. But right now, I'm talking about them. We've not come to what is going on now. <laughs> in their greed, self-seeking and ambition, they couldn't see the Trojan horses sent in to exacerbate the situation. Neither could those who lost out in the struggle for position resist giving heed to whispers, doctrines of demons. They will now use those doctrines to draw away many for themselves. Others <laughs> use politi the political class, the kings and emperors, to remove their opponents and take over. That's how the bishop of Rome might to be supreme to other bishops. Supremacy battles which rage in areas and patriarchies for centuries has continued to this day. Look to your church. Where you go? The building the court church. Your denomination. See how they started. How the breaks continued. How they go to court among you. How they fight. How everything. Just watch. That's the point. What are they fighting for? Money. Position. Power. Influence. Nothing more. Not to serve God. Because if they want to serve God, God will elevate them and call them. And God will give them a ministry. And God will promote the ministry. Not human beings. Not human beings promoting the ministry. If only those leaders had looked. And held onto the altar and finish off our faith. They would have had the Holy Spirit asking them to shun the world and its loss. They would have seen him who died for us hanging on the cross all there alone bleeding. Lord forgive us. If you are a believer watching. Can't you see the same Jesus asking you to flee the world and its loss? And listen to the Holy Spirit. I'm asking you if you're a believer. You know who you are watching. You are still dancing with the world. You are still committing some of those things. You are still in silly relationships that have no reason to, for you to be in. Listen to the Holy Spirit asking you to get out and cleave to Jesus completely and totally. And you will see why he, whether he will not make a way for you to continue to run this race. If you are an unbeliever, I'm asking you today, don't you hear the knock of that same Jesus on your heart? Asking to allow him to come into your heart and dine with you. Are you a believing parent? What example are you setting for your children? Whatever they ask, give them. Everything, but you rather than teach them the word of the Lord because that's too hard. So your children now dance with the world. You will give account. If you truly love your children, you yourself will flee from sin. 
you will stop your own hands to the world and embrace Christ fully. Because you are going to give account of not just your soul, but that of your children. Sorry. Are you a believing adult with unbelieving parents? What example are you setting? Don't you know that they may come into the saving knowledge of Christ? When they see your zeal and uncompromising attitude to sin, you can't be preaching the gospel to them, but they know that you are as bad as you were before you said you were born again. Oftentimes, many believers make compromises to their beliefs in order to be accepted by their peers and the society. If you are like that, I plead with you today to stop immediately. Our examples tell more than our talk. Joining the world in order to reach them will never work. It didn't work then, it won't work now. In fact, it is a sin to dance with the world, meaning to have 